the richer you are <laughs> and that, the higher you are in terms of social class, um, the less compassionate, less, less empathetic you are as a human. You know, as you rise in wealth and privilege, you share less, you feel less compassion to images of suffering. Rich high school kids in the United States are more likely to shoplift, right? And that's striking. I, I think it's our central failure. One of the things that you talk about is the difference in social class. Yeah, yeah. And how things change. Oh, man. Are, are we worst people <laughs> the richer and more powerful we become? Because your research seems to show that. Yeah, I would say yes. Um, and I'm sorry to say that, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, we, um, uh, I got interested in social class, um, actually living in England, you know, I lived in England in 1978. Um, and United States is very blind to social class. We're now more aware of it, Bernie Sanders, et cetera, rightfully so, 1% critique. You know, 80s, 90s, we're just blind to it. It was a more egalitarian time. And I lived in Nottingham, England, very working class town in a very tough time in England's history of, you know, coal strikes and the like. And it was tough. And and the English had this um, just much more sophisticated understanding of class and differentiations between on the dole and working class and posh and, you know, all these categories. I was like, wow, class is everywhere. It affects how people speak and dress and eat and so forth. And so we started to apply social class to what we've been talking about, like the compassion, awe, gratitude, empathy, kindness, sharing, altruism, and just, you know, across um, studies and, and, you know, largely in the United States. So I think you could question whether this applies to Holland or UK or Japan, where there, there's less inequality, I might add. Um, you know, as you rise in wealth and privilege, you share less, you feel less compassion to images of suffering. You know, you see an image. This was a striking study to me of, you know, it's a movie about a child who has cancer and poorer people show activation of the vagus nerve, which is part of compassion, you know, causes you to like want to help well-to-do people, less activation. Uh, they feel less awe as you rise in the social class hierarchy in the United States, um, uh, are more impolite. And so that was part of my Power Paradox book was that story about the class. I, you know, I, I hesitate, I worry about like, am I a worse person? And I, I'd rather use your earlier language of like, what are the structural conditions that get in the way of this? And you think about, you know, rising in, in wealth and privilege and class as introduce, you, you create a life that makes it harder to be kind, you know, that your people are assisting you with things and um, you don't come into contact with suffering. You know, you live in a neighborhood in the United States or probably UK where it's like, you don't see it, you know, and so you, it doesn't train those tendencies. And, you know, frankly, um, Stephen, I, you know, I think this is increasingly true in the UK but in the United States, uh, you know, with one in six people impoverished, uh, life expectancies dropping, you know, six, 700,000 unhoused people in the United States, where I live, Berkeley, California, everywhere you go, you're bumping into somebody who doesn't have a home. I, I think it's our central failure in the US is how privilege has short-circuited our, our better, human tendencies. How do we know that it's the increase in wealth and social class that is causing us to become less kind, um, yeah. less empathetic, less compassionate, or it's just assholes go further? Yeah. Like yeah. there's a distinction there. Like maybe these people were always assholes and that's why they became successful or rich or wealthy or whatever, or, or, or in a higher social class. Yeah, I, I mean, there are two, and that's a critical question, right? And, and people have long championed this idea that, well, maybe all of this, what it really tells us is you, you, if you practice our compassion, you don't rise in the ranks and you don't gain wealth and the like. And there are two rebuttals to that idea. The first, which I chart in the power paradox, which people still don't believe too much, but uh, on balance today, um, people who practice empathy, who listen and, and 
share resources, practice gratitude, rise in the ranks. They, they do better in social hierarchies. Um, and that replicates in a lot of contexts. And, and really what happens is, this is why I call it the power paradox, is once I have everybody's respect and you know wealth and the like, then it, I tend to misbehave, right? In the ways we've talked about through a lot of different uh, uh, forms of unethical behavior. The other rebuttal is we've actually done experiments, right? And you can take a middle-class individual and you can get them into the mindset like, hey, you're actually have a lot of advantage vis-a-vis most of society through simple manipulations, right? Just think about how you compare to a lot of poor people. And they're like, oh, I'm doing really well. And that simple shift in mindset leads to reduced compassion, reduced empathy, so you can, you can actually move people around where you give them the sense that they're privileged and it tends to undermine these, these tendencies. Jesus. I know. That's fucking hell horrifying. It is. And, you know, um, I worry about it. I worry about it a lot. What, um, you know, the, the kind of poor distribution of privilege in the United States and increasing UK and other countries is doing to the social fabric. It's, it's uh, problematic. It's interesting because there is there's kind of a long um, prevailing stereotype that rich people are like bad, like yeah. like less compassionate, um, less empathetic, and I and I always wondered whether that was just I don't know was it true was it um, was was it people being jealous was it um, just too much of a broad generalization was yeah. it you know based on the, the acts of maybe a few yeah but you're telling me that the science supports the fact that. Generally, the more the richer you are, and that, the higher you are in terms of social class, um, the less compassionate, less, less empathetic you are as a human. Yeah, and you know, and it is. I mean, that's the broad argument. I've given you a mm. couple of findings here. There are all kinds of other findings that speak to this. Jesus, um, you know, one. This is one of my favorites. Is you know, in these um, these epidemiologists who are studying broad trends in social behavior discovered this accidentally. They're interested in who shoplifts as a, a teenager in the United States. You know, a basic unethical tendency, really costly for businesses in the United States. Is it the rich or the poor? Well, you know what, who I, who, who I would assume it would be, but I feel like I'm wrong. <laughs> it's the rich. Rich high school kids in the United States are more likely to shoplift, right? Um, and oh, that's goodness. striking. They've got their parents' credit card. They can buy whatever they want and they violate that social rule. This is where it gets really worrisome. Uh, my former student, Michael Krauss, did really nice work on U.S. senators and U.S. policymakers. You know, American politicians are rich. They, uh, increasingly so. And he was simply interested in, does your degree of privilege or wealth predict regressive policy preferences? Like, let's not give resources to schools for the poor, Let's not fund, you know, Medicare. Let's really move wealth through taxation policies to the well-to-do. And the wealthier you are, the more you, produ- you preferred and advocated for, you know, serious economic policies that hurt the poor uh, and benefit the well-to-do who already have, you know, in the U.S., the 1%, they have enough. They have more than enough, right? Why not share a little? So it's deep. If you love the Diary of a CEO brand and you watch this channel, please do me a huge favor, become part of the 15% of the viewers on this channel that have hit the subscribe button. It helps us tremendously and the bigger the channel gets, the bigger the guests.